Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Raj starting as the Black Protoss, bottom right hand corner. We have Hedgek starting as the Blue Zerg. You know that I think it, opening up with ladies and gentlemen, I wonder if there's like a they, them, whatever. This is on retro, by the way. Game three between these two, whoever wins this one is going to move on to the winner's match, I believe. Trust the title as to where this game's at. I believe it is best of threes as uh, for the opener in the round of 16 to add more games. I wonder if there's like a more include, like, hey guys is kind of like, anyway, uh, I don't know that it's all that important. And I don't, I, I honestly, I find that most people aren't that concerned as long as it's like not in their face and in person and amongst friends and whatever not. But anyway, ignoring all that, let me know actually in chat what you would like to, uh, what you'd like to hear. I kind of mix it up a little bit and stick with the, the, um, another commentary done by Diggity Aspects and that seems to suit. It seems, I think, to get people in the mental mood and including myself and switch the brain on. A little distracted today for whatever reason, but we'll expect a good game. I looked up Raj and I was not aware that he's, uh, first of all, I think he's mostly been hanging around Gosu League when he's been participating, but he was actually part uh, did quite well in the qualifiers leading up to a lot of the events recently. Um, Looks like we're seeing a gateway first opener for him. So he's actually formidable for Hedgek. And this is now, a, I'm calling it a group of death because we got Hedgek and Raj in it. Both extremely strong contenders. Overlord making its way out. Looks like we had an overpool opposite end. This has become more popular for Zerg, I believe, to deal with. That's actually, now I'm realizing the meta shift is, is Zerg have been reacting to the gateway first openers rather than t with 12 hatches with overpools. And I think that is what has pushed Protoss more towards the Forge first openers. Because with the Forge first opener versus the Overpool, you can get the Nexus before Cannon, and sometimes don't you don't even require Cannon um, if you're scouting well enough. Anyway, it looks like we actually had a cross map. So Raj went across the top, found no Overlord, and then went for a cross map scout to bottom right. And it pays off this time because he finds his opponent first. It looks like just two Zerglings being constructed on the front. We do have, it looks like, two Zelts that are queued up on Raj's side. Unfortunately for him, this isn't the spawn positions you're hoping for, but the lack of scouting information might benefit him and allow more Zealots to make it out on the map before Hedgek is really able to contend with it. It looks like Hedgek scouting bottom left with the drone, setting another drone out potentially to build a base. Let's see if he, when he scouts the Zealot, first of all. The Zealot actually taking, and look at this play also, moving uh, a route away from the Overlord to make it as long a period as possible before, or is he just going to go, oh, interestingly enough, he's hunting down the third hatchery instead. Here, I was expecting a bit of a clever play of keeping that Zealot out of vision, instead maybe recognizing the Overpool, drawing the Zealot back. So just making sure that Zealot's in play to discover the third base, but maybe create some chaos there as well. So he's discovered this. Does he just going to move up and attack? Looks like he is. Creates a bit of a distraction on the map and for, adds that little aspect of pressure. Probe's taken some damage, but kept alive. In the meantime, we do have that gas up starting to mine. Out of the fairly late 326 moment, we have a few additional Zerglings that have been queued. And it looks like they are starting to run across that map. That's going to leave just one Zergling to deal with that probe, which is going to keep it alive. We do have a Nexus behind all this and a simulator dropped and a forge <clears throat> after all of that. Two zealots have now made their way into the six o'clock location and a third zealot is making its way, which is plenty actually to deal with these zerglings, particularly at the close positions. And these three zealots are a considerable threat against this hatchery actually, if Hedgek might want to, so he's con constructing zergling speed, but it'll be a minute and he might have to dedicate the initial two larva to build Zerglings, and let's see if he opts for that or if he takes the risk. Okay, he isn't gonna go for Zerglings here rather than risking opposite end. So pulled away momentarily. The three Zealots starting to pressure the natural expansion. Looks like a sunken colony got built in between everything else. And now a mistake from Raj walking all the way in. He wants to try to go all the way into the main, but instead he's gonna get pinned by these Zerglings. And that's a lot of free damage. What a wonderful engagement there by Hedgek. So there's one Zealot remaining. Plenty of Zerglings to wipe it out. This did delay his economy quite a bit. So still an overall win for Raj because, man, that's 11 drones at the 440 mark. And you want to be well past that point if you're a Zerg player, which actually I'm wondering what, where this is going to contend. Are we going to see a... This, is going to, this might force Hydralisk. Yeah, I think this is going to force Hydralisk out from Hedgek rather than uh, any sort of layer timing because... 
if we see this Stargate, which we do right there, that's going to put any sort of Mutalisk counter well, well behind. And that's going to allow a lot of play. So all he has to do is produce one Corsair. And that's going to put Hedgek in a very difficult situation where he's forced five hatchery. And that allows a lot of leeway for uh, for Raj to go a lot of aspects of different play. It looks like a second, a second gas has been dropped. Maybe to go... High Templar tech to follow. I'm not sure if I like the extra gas plays. I prefer to see more minerals boosted in a faster gateway flood in response to follow uh, the follow-up, but maybe wanting to get extra gas to get uh, more upgrades a little bit more rapidly. We'll have to see if he makes it, if he's going either Dark Templar tech or going for Corsair play or heavier Corsair play. I don't like that as much going up against what will inevitably be some form of early Hydralisk play it looks like we do see the hydro stand dropped and a layer mutating and this is just shows you the level of hedgex play where hedgex is going to have the timing on these hydralisks as well and keep them in minimal numbers An additional sunken colony being dropped at the six o'clock location so he's filtering he filtered in a lot of drones behind this is dropping another hatchery to get that sim city up to six o'clock so still going to the four hatch but he does need to start producing some hydralisks here and the timing of these hydralisks is amazing i gotta say look at this we got a hydralisk popping out right as the Corsair is out on the map. And it's certainly going to be able to take out this Overlord in mid-map position. But let's see. I don't know that uh, with a few additional Hydralisks out on the field that it's going to be able to get a lot else accomplished. So, And it looks like there is a second Corsair that's being produced for Raj uh, after that initial Overlord kill. But it looks like we are seeing a Gateway Flood. But the gas is still mining as well. And I'm, I'll be interested to see where that gas goes. I have a feeling this is actually going to give Raj... So you can see right now it's giving him a little bit of a gas imbalance, which is where I would have wanted to see uh, a bit. But this might translate into a lot of High Templar as far as a follow-up. So we'll see if Raj opts to use it that direction. So Lair has been spotted. As well as the transition to 5 hatch and the Hydros on the ground. But that's got a, that does give a little bit of a head scratch to Raj where he is going to have to play a little bit safer because with that layer in place, there is always that threat of a sudden spire drop and a sudden tech switch if you aren't applying pressure. He's got a lot of zealots out though. Plus one weapons is gonna finish right near that 730 mark and zealot leg speed is going to finish as well. Now look at this, the Zerglings not noticing those zealots marching by, catching Hedgek distracted. I'm not sure where Hedgek was giving his attention, but those zealots are going to be able to march right on top of these Zerglings and whoop, never mind, they're Hedgek spotting it and able to pull them out to the 12 o'clock location, but still losing a Zergling. And now, Raj on the move. Now, there's a single, uh, it looks like there's going to be two sunken colonies here to the 6 o'clock location. At the natural expansion, we do have a single uh, single sunken handful of Hydralisks. Not a lot of Hydralisks out, though. I got to say, Hedgek's done a great job of uh, doing some economic recovery, considering looks like we do have four gateways behind this. We have the Templar Archives manufacturing as well as the robotics facility. The Zealots now careening in. The Corsair is there as well, going to try to get as many Overlord kills on top of everything else. The drones drilling up to try to create some additional defense. Zerglings making the way in a little bit of a blockade at the ramp. Nice Zealot to blockade out the support units, allowing these Zealots to get additional kills on the ground and also allow those Corsairs to do Overlord damage. And with that, Raj doing a massive amount of damage, mostly in Overlord kills, that's going to supply block Hedgek considerably for quite a while and allow, especially with that gas flood from earlier, him to get a bunch of, it looks like it mostly went into High Templar. He's gonna get a very healthy High Templar count. He's gonna have that robotics up and an observatory well before lurkers are even potentially out in the field. It looks like he is building a Dark Templar behind this and dropping that second forge as well. Psystorm also in the way. Spire now dropping for Raj. So it looks like rather than really dedicating to... So he's also getting plus one weapons in the midst of this. And I'm wondering if he wants to get Scourge to wipe those Corsair off the map. Or if he is thinking about like, okay, I took a lot of economic damage. Maybe just go for a Mutalisk Flood. Uh, the problem with tr attempting that is his Raj is going to have eyes with these Corsairs. They're going to stay active throughout this. It looks like he's going to catch another Overlord before the Hydralisks are in position. Kind of the danger of building Overlords at the main without the Hydralisk protection. So that's gonna that's another hundred resources lost. But is he gonna get lose a Corsair? No, it looks like the Corsair is going to be able to cycle out without a lot of trouble. Dark Templar making its way across. I don't know that it's got a lot of targets 
but that is going to deny any sort of wandering. And it looks like he's going to pocket that Dark Templar maybe at the 3 o'clock location to deny uh, a fourth base that could be taken down the line. Right now, Raj with a massive supply lead. He's got a ton of size storm to work with. He's going to have that continuous upgrade lead as well. Is going up to six gateways and continue to build the Corsairs, I believe, after having that spire spotted. And he's also got a shuttle along the edge. Is he going to scoop up that Dark Templar and only the Dark Templar? It looks like it's just to move that Dark Templar in the line. But we are going to have Scourge in the air. Queen's Nest dropping as well as an Evolution Chamber. Hedgek getting a lot more drones. Unfortunately, not parking that at the three, uh, the three o'clock location is going to allow that hatchery to be completed. But this Dark Templar might be able to get a lot of damage done in the main. The Overlord speed has been skipped right this second. And it's going to be a while before it's online. Actually, the Queen's Nest... Sorry, the Queen been canceled. I'm not sure what provoked that. Or sorry, never. The Queen's Nest not finished. For a second there, I thought the Lair had been canceled. It was just the Evolution Chamber switching. But with the spot at the northern base, that's going to filter out drones. So at least the drones won't be lost. Some Overlords are making their way this direction. But with that lack of Overlord speed, which was in fact skipped, still going to end up with some drone kills. Unfortunately, and this might give forewarning to Raj to get some cannons down immediately, because he's going to see these Mutalisks spawning right off the bat. He can build, it looks like that Spire getting worked on, but that's not before the Mutalisks are in the air. The Scourge are chasing down that last Corsair, and this is an opportunity for Hedgek to get right back into this. He's got eight Mutalisks. There the cannons are coming online. The Mutalisks are not making their way across the map. That is useful to just hang back and kill some Dark Templar. The Spire loss is significant, but again, minimal drone losses. That Overlord in position didn't take out, actually, the initial drones here. Hydro's now getting some good surround, wiping out, and that was a lot, that was a nice mitigation of damage overall. So Mulus now moving up to the 12 o'clock location to maybe try to drop, uh, stop a base before it was even produced. Dragoon's gonna get wiped out. We have only a single cannon, but some Dragoon's microwing their way up to that northern location. There's a lot of Dragoon's right there. That This is actually what I like seeing these days from Protoss players is a, a pretty heavy Dragoon flood with uh, faster weapons upgrades if they can manage it. And it looks like Maelstrom also developing in the background, although I don't see a Dark Archon. One mule is getting wiped out, two additional cannons being forced out, and this is a late third base now. So where Raj was in a great position to go for a third, the Mutalists are going to deny the third for quite some time. He still has a massive supply lead, and Hedgek's economy has suffered a good amount of disruption, but the Psy Storm going to be a little bit less effective. There's the Dark Archon. The Maelstrom and a good Psy Storm should negate a good portion of that Mutalisk threat. That's a pretty hefty investment, though, keep in mind. Zealot starting to march out. We see some Hydralisks, etc., making their way out on the map. And Hedgek now recognizing that he's got his opponent down to two bases is filing out. One problem for Hedgek, though, is with, with just starting level two weapons and no Carapace upgrade, he's going to be behind in the overall upgrade advantage. This is level two one, level one weapons. The Dark Archon can help mitigate the Mutalisks. I might have already missed that. Uh, yeah, I might have already missed the Mutalisks dying unfortunately do one of these high does it show a kill count i'm not seeing a kill count on any of these high templar it could be they backed off yeah they backed off to the top right but raj has a gigantic army to work with and he could pile drive either the natural expansion the six o'clock or both down the line so hedgick even though he's done a good job of denying additional bases he's still way behind as far as the raw unit count and his units do not hit as hard and he doesn't have a lot of lurkers to create some counter frustration. In fact, it looks like he skipped, potentially skipped Lurker Tech altogether. Never mind, he's got two Lurkers morphing someplace out on the map. But fortunately for him, Hedgek is moving out towards the north with the large portion of this army rather than there's the an attempted size storm. The Maelstrom hits, and there's the secondary size storm plus the Mutalist gonna. Yeah, that's completely lost resources. Now Hedgek down 50 supply. One problem though is is and the Zergling actually able to scout the size of the army. It looks like they're trying to pick off the High Templar as they're scooting by. Hedgek cannot afford to donate units right this second if he's going to stay relevant overall. We have additional creep colonies. Yeah, emergency creep colonies now being dropped at the 3 o'clock location, recognizing the size and the scope of this army. We have observers alongside. We do have another Maelstrom to work with. Although I don't know how that, that's going to that'll stop some... Hydralis dodge protect, uh, potentially for some beautiful follow-up. It's almost like a supplementary bonus to Psy Storm, is what it comes down to. It makes those Psy Storms hit all the stronger. Hedgek now fleeing back, trying to get a better engagement position. He is now isolated away from that 3 o'clock location. The few lurkers that are on the ground trying to get what damage they can. 
but they're very quickly cleaned up. And Raj just holding position here. He can afford to hold position right on this ramp, get some favorable trades, and he still has the threat back to the three o'clock. Now starting to move down into Hedgick, the Dark Archon trying to do what it can to bully forward. And I don't know that Hedgick just has the, the raw amount to stem the tide here from Rod. Raj continuing to pile away at this. Some side storms being expended. This is not a lot of units left. The observers still very, very alive and with backups. And the Zealots able to actually get on the field bottom left. Now that army's been thin. There's still a lot of troops left. I'm not sure where they looks like they haven't been rallied bottom right. And I would have expected Raj to play a little bit more defensively than aggressively with this army, given the supply lead. But let's see if he just backs out, waits for reinforcements to join up, and then re-engages. He does have some zealots marching that way. But this is starting to look like a, a thin attack grouping. Level 2 armor has finished. 12 o'clock Nexus looks like it is going to get established without too much travail. And it looks like a pocket of zealots, yeah, rallied to the wrong location. Going to try to back up and regroup. Unfortunately, it looks like just that uh, the composition of the army, a lot of zealots in the midst of it. The Zealots mostly just uh, scattered a bit, so we'll see if Raj can get that army re regathered. Has a whole lot of gateways. His main is just about to mine out. Might want to start making movements towards top right. Still four base play from Hedgick. He's got adrenal upgrades coming along the way. Is reestablishing that lurker line now that he's got a brief reprieve. A healthy drone count. He's still down 60 supply, but I'm kind of wondering where that supply is from Raj because this is only a control group and a little bit beyond that of Zealots, seven Dragoons, and a couple High Templar. And so I'm wondering where the rest of that army is. Maybe it's queued up and it looks like it's marching down to, to resupport. Hedrick now holding, yeah, just trying to get some Psy Storms and some value. The Zealots didn't join that forward attack. So maybe just, yeah, going forward, doing the damage with the Dragoons, backing back out, which you'll see a lot of Protoss players do when they're looking for a long-term game and want to get economic value. Uh, just drop the size storms, get as much uh, bonus as you can, and then force the uh, let the Zerg be over aggro into you, where you win the fights. So it looks like Raj going to try to exploit that with the threat over that bridge line. Let's see if he ever makes an attempt at the three o'clock location. We have a hatchery in the way now as well. This is a nice fortress that's going for Hedgick. Drones, not drones, probes being transferred to the twelve o'clock location. We have a pocket army moved to bottom left for Hedgick to go ahead and. Grab a base there. An observer checking out the 9 o'clock, so I'm presuming that that's going to be... So we have a probe top right and a probe checking out 9 o'clock. I'm not sure which of these bases that Raj is thinking about establishing. It looks he is moving a lot of troops bottom left. The Lurker has not yet morphed, so if he pushes in his army here bottom left, he will be able to deny an additional base to Hedgick and maintain that economic lead. Now a Lurker morphing on the low ground to try to buy some time. And I don't see any movements from Hedgick to, well, okay, now moving a few troops. A lot of Zerglings starting to make their way towards the left to maybe engage this. But it looks like instead, yeah, they're just staging forward. So right now, Raj doing a lot to put himself in a good position. He's already dropped a pylon here at the 9 o'clock base. Zerglings kind of filtering in, but they're filtering in way too late. Overlord and the drone trying to hide themselves. Now that that's been cleared out, but Raj doing a good job of denying extra bases, of keeping Hedgick to what he's got. We got some more lurkers out in the field, but we do have Hive Tech here and Double Evolution Chamber, so Hedgick could be just hanging out waiting until he gets some of that higher tier upgrades, that higher tier tech, and just proceed from there. But right now, Raj economically ahead, or I shouldn't say economically ahead, he just lost initial base, needs to get another base up and running. But uh, and let's see if he can deny that hatchery top right as well, but right now he's, I should say, macro-wise ahead. He's got a larger army somewhere out on the map. He's got a Nexus that's coming online. He's got, uh, he's managed to keep that army. He's gotten some pretty good trades overall. So let's see if he can keep it up. But I will say once that Adrenal upgrade is finished and the upgrades start kicking in for the Zerglings, these trades are gonna start moving in Hedgick's favor. But right now, Raj getting some really, really good engagements. Lurker's still doing a lot of damage on the low ground before getting cleaned up. But the Zealots clearing out a lot of the Zerglings. Psystorms are landing. Needs to preserve this army. It looks like, ooh, never mind, losing some High Templar. Did I say that engagement went in Raj's favor? I take that back. That was a huge drop in supply for Raj. And now, Hedgick within 20 supply. And he had that hatchery finish top right. He's also got eyes on that 9 o'clock base. 
So if he can get building top right, he could drop a Nidus as well to move things that direction. This is still two base construction. If you look at it as far as a division, if if Hedgek establishes top right, and you kind of look at my cursor, the dividing line right there, even with the unfavorable trades he uh, that he's suffered thus far, he still will end up in a pretty strong position. It looks like some zealots were trying to march up to maybe make something happen there. Single Zergling expending. Level 2 weapons, level 2 spines, by the way, completed. An observer right over the rally point of Raj to kind of see what he's got out moving. That's a nice position of that observer from Hedgek, I have to say, or for uh, for Raj, uh, to keep an eye on, on Hedgek's army, I should say. I think I had that reversed half a second ago. Defilers are now going to join the fray, which is going to negate a lot of the Dragoon damage. It negates a little bit of the Archon damage. The splash still ends up happening, but not... Uh, but not the, the full damage, so it's kind of the offset. It's still pretty good with an Archon Wall at dealing at clearing some Zerglings out. You do have the faster Observer movement engaging as well, which I think the range, the vision range has also been upgraded, which helps with dealing with those Lurkers. Dark Templar checking out bottom left just to make sure, but I think this is going to be the last base that Hedgek grabs down the line and potentially going to be what he utilizes to basically, okay, we'll have the fights down here. As long as I keep that out of your hands, I'm okay. Right now, though, we have Raj moving an army that direction. Some Zerglings, I'm not sure how they spotted it, but they're making their way bottom left as well. The Dark Templar should be able to clean them up. He's just making sure that hasn't been grabbed. Raj, that was kind of a psychic dodge, removing his army mid-position. Again, not a huge attack force. And unfortunately for Raj, Hedgek has... He's... Uh, I was about to say close the gap. Now we got another macro cycle, and all of a sudden Raj pushing ahead. Hedgek's got a sizable bank, though, to work with, and a lot of that is in minerals, where you can get the Zerglings, which are going to be really, really effective here in the late game. We've got the final upgrades there queued. We do have the upgrade lead still in Raj's favor, but I'm not sure that that's going to last all that much longer, and you can see in the production queue a bunch of stuff queued up for Hedgek as well. Raj looking like he might want to make some maneuvers, particularly as these lurkers are not yet burrowed. So starting to engage, getting some nice side storm dropped within that observer range. That Dark Archon has been a hero. It's been here this entire time. Catching Zerg before they have all of their units hotkeyed can be a, a big victory point for Protoss. Because you have to like go back and grab and a, a move and that can end up with the... Basically when you don't have your army hotkeyed this late and you're not using F keys. I've seen this as a weakness of some Zerg plays, including Urban. I, I could see Urban winning this, but I've noticed that this can be a weakness in his late game where he, he's not using the F keys uh, sometimes and he doesn't have his army hot keyed up. At some point, you have to transition to that, I presume. At least I've seen that, because otherwise you can end up with these attack situations and then you end up with like a thinned attack group going into a Protoss army rather than a unified attack group going into a Protoss army. But anyway... I say things like this even though I'm not a top level player. This is just purely from observation. But I think it's still a, a solid tip because I believe it makes sense uh, logically. And so I'm going to have to I'll rely on that overall. Bottom left corner now being grabbed. I want to preface that. Being grabbed uh, for Hedgek Raj. Starting to move that direction. He's got a lot of Archons. And this is where under that Dark Swarm they can start popping Zerglings very, very rapidly. Especially with that massive amount of upgrade damage. So even with the displacement, the splash, it can be pretty effective at clearing the Zerglings. But regathering and now just patrolling mid-map. I will say though, if Raj wants to win this, he is eventually going to need to clear out bottom left and establish those bases for himself. Uh, mostly because Zerg theoretically is in a victorious position if they're one base up over the Protoss opponent. Uh, Protoss, if you get equalized bases, you win. Starting to see initial plagues now dropped on Raj's army and those Zerglings able to filter forward and get some good damage done as well. No additional Psy Storms as far as I can, as far as I engage, but these High Templar are now some Psy Storms under the Dark Swarm and these Dragoons are in Danger Town, as are these High Templar. These Zerglings will chew them alive very, very quickly. Archon's finally moving in to provide some rescue out of Dark Swarm range, but Hedgek near Max Near Max is actually getting uh, Ventral Sacks transporting, so that'll be something in the background for him. The Zerglings nearly fully upgraded, so he's going to have Zerglings, Defilers, Transportation, uh, additional Hatchery top right. 
a lot to work with. He is mined out here at the six o'clock location at the natural. He's got a few mi uh, minerals left there at his main. Let's see if he, he's got drones there at the three o'clock location. I don't know if he's been able to filter them up. Ooh, great size storm there. He's been able to filter them up to the top right. Looks like he has been able to through that Nidus Canal. And it looks like he's also moved troops to the bottom left. Nidus Canal just establishing there. So Hedgek playing this defensively. And I think he's actually, because of uh, Raj's passivity, despite w with that upgrade advantage and with that army advantage, Protoss can do this one of two ways. You can either get the bases you need and drop a bunch of robotics facilities down like this and then hold and get some really good trades. But I feel like in order to do this, you need to have one more, one more base added to yourself and one more base denied from Zerg on a four-player four map. Or when you have that upgrade advantage, you need to bully some bases down and force Zerg to rebuild a lot of stuff. And I don't know that Raj has done either of that. So we'll see if he's able to continue with this into victory of the long term. Also losing some Zealots as he's trying to approach the high ground. Is he able to deny that natural expansion bottom right? So that is something. And ooh, catching a good amount of Psy Storm right there as far as a follow-up. But Zerglings and Dark Swarm now starting to filter into a Vic, try to evict these units from bottom right. This might be a situation where Raj might want to re withdraw regroup this army before Hedgek is able to mount a proper response. More Psy Storms engaging. He's going to end up losing these High Templar. Yeah, losing these High Templar, and that's also going to put the rest of that army pinned in and at risk from both directions. Depending on uh, Hedgek's army supply, we actually have a, a supply lead now back to Hedgek. He's got a lot of these Archons here, and let's see if he's going to finally withdraw the Filer in a bit of a risky situation. But I believe after this, Hedgek, he might think about just going ahead and drop, uh, redropping that hatchery and getting some Sutton colonies up as rapidly as possible. Man, look at the lurker line here, bottom left. And some Zerglings again looking for an engagement. We also have an Ultralis Cavern dropping and an Arbiter in production. I love seeing that. Also looks like a little bit of Maelstrom. As far as a turnaround engagement, some more Maelstrom and some beautiful size Storm. Love to see that. Great engagement there from Raj. Again, I want to see this turn around into him either being able to take a base or deny a base. Maybe potentially just having this army latently out there. He's got a single Dragoon. Top right is enough of a threat. A bunch of Lurkers being constructed. The Arbiter can actually be pretty fantastic late game, especially with Recall alongside. Because first of all, Overlords now, basically Zerg now needs to dedicate even more APM to have Zerglings out in the forward field. Uh, recall on the main can be really big. More Zerglings engaging mid-map. It looks like there's some really beautiful Psy Storms to clear them up. Hedgek having some trouble. Looks like an, an Observer was picked off, which is going to allow the Lurkers to do some damage. Overall, I don't see a follow-up. Oh, never mind. There is a single follow-up to Observer. But still, with the level 3 weapons now, with the Zealots, you can see, you can see how... Difficult it is for them to stand and fight with the Lurkers underneath. The Archons as well take a massive... So shields always take full damage. And so the Lurkers continuing to drive forward. And now Hedgek has created a massive wedge mid-map. And he's starting to threaten the contain on Raj. Overall, and I think with that, if he does manage to contain, it looks like that Dragoon's been cleared out top right. He's just going to have an overwhelming amount of resources over the long term. However, a Miracle Arbiter... Where is that Arbiter? Kind of curious where the Arbiter is out in the field. A Miracle Arbiter recall, bottom right into the Hive Tech lands, take out the Defiler Mountain, the Hydral's Den, basically all of this, and then a follow-up attack could be uh, fantastic. Could be fantastic. Raj has a pretty sizable bank, but that 12 o'clock location is gone. The 9 o'clock location is still mining, but this is it. That's all he has is that 9 o'clock base, where Hedgek still has a lot of leftover supply. He's got two additional bases he can grab at leisure, that also have a lot of gas. So if it comes down to a break point, he's in a pretty strong position. It looks like the Reaver is now joining the fray. So was that a walk down? Yeah, walking down. So Raj getting aggressive now and Overlord's not in forward position to help deal with this. So clearing out a lot of that lurker line. Now moving up, gonna, ooh, a nice Maelstrom as well to protect the Arbiter. Beautiful micro here from Raj. Now they're coming out of stasis, still able to able to pick off the Arbiter there. But that was some nice little bit of micro to clear out some of the Lurkers. But unfortunately, that Lurker line extended all the way to mid-map. Hedgek continuing to push this up. However, Hedgek running into a lot of Psy Storm. These Reavers well defended in the, the back. So yeah, we have some, some Plague dropped. But honestly, Hedgek 
because he's streaming his, his army in a little bit piecemeal rather than swarming this army and wiping it out, that's allowing Raj to get some pretty good trades. I think Raj is still behind. I think Hedgek still has the, the economy he needs to kind of work with this. And particularly with these Reavers out in position like this, that leaves them very vulnerable. And that's a lot of gas that needs to be rebuilt. A shuttle making its way out to scoop the, to rescue at least two of the Reavers. I don't know that it's going to be able to, yeah, not going to be able to rescue the third. And certainly not going to be able to rescue the rest of these Dragoons. And actually other Reavers, never mind. He's going to stay and micro them. That's a mistake. I think he should have just pulled them out. He, he's not even getting an, an additional shot with the Scarabs. And that might have been better suited moving to the 12 o'clock. But now Raj losing the army. We have 10 Ultralisks in production behind this. And honestly, 10 Ultralisks plus Dark Swarm equals a dead base either at the 12 o'clock or 9 o'clock location. Or multiple dead armies on Raj's side of the map. As long as the Dark Swarm is there to provide some support. And honestly, I don't. he doesn't need to go for the 12 o'clock. He can just yeah engage this 9 o'clock location. The Reaver isn't going to be able to get... And there's double ramps for them to walk up as well. The Side Storm is not going to be sufficient. Hedgek now peeling a lot of that unit forward. Ooh. Yeah, looks like he's not going to bother with the Psy Storm support. Or the, the I should say, uh, Dark Storm support. A bunch of Lurkers sneaking in underneath. They're getting stormed. They're getting the Bejesus stormed out of them, but at the same time, they're eating a lot of Psy Storms that really needed to be there for basically everything else. And now these Ultralisks going to be able... How many are remaining? Wow, that's a lot of Ultralisks. Going to be able to turn right back around... Wipe out this cannon line, wipe out the last remaining base, which leaves 1,200 resources approximately left in Raj's command. And that is going to be that. There's GG. Well played from Hedgek. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.